my mic in. Give me a second. I don't have my mic in. I wasn't prepared. That's just a shame. A shame. You can't even hear me. You can't even hear me. My mic is not in. What is wrong with me? Um, but welcome back to another video. It's Friday. I'm excited. Uh, I'm working four days a week and to be honest, I'm loving it already, but that may be a very, very premature decision. I don't know, but I'm happy that all my other co-workers are at work and I'm here. Um, I've, I've decided to do four days a week because I have uni work, I have other projects I'm working on, projects that I can't disclose just yet, but I have projects that I'm working on and um, I also want to invest a little bit time into my arts, which, you know, as we all know, have taken a serious blow in recent years. So that's what I, why I'm taking four days off. And also, like, my energy is very much chaotic um i have a lot of energy i haven't had breakfast so this is a bad start altogether i need to go for a run after this um i feel good i'm aching because i've gone back to the gym and before i start this video this is a review of netflix's messiah and i'll get into why i'm doing that in a second but before i do that i just want to open a package i got so pix packs is an app that i use um to get all these lovely photographs in the background um it's an app where you can attach i think 16 to 18 uh photographs for free and they will send you physical copies uh and i just want to show you some of the pictures that i got uh printed uh it was i i recently posted some of them on my twitter for those of you who don't follow me my link is link is in the description um so please do follow me if you are subscribed to my channel and if you follow me and you aren't subscribed subscribe um but yeah they come in this like lovely i'm gonna do my best not to show off my address uh but they come in this like lovely cardboard packaging um this isn't a sponsored video by the way i'm just really excited to have pictures of the last year like the most iconic pictures of the last year up on my wall like i did this the year before and these were well this isn't but these are the pictures that i have from like 2018 2017 um and there are some of my favorite people you know zara's here um simon is here who this is simon also um this is my like my siblings my brother um alicia one i can't talk about um so yeah um please do consider downloading the app this is this is how it's spelt um so yeah if you want to get some cool hard copy pictures they are matte they're not shiny but if you want to get some hard copy pictures please do consider downloading pix packs you only need to pay for shipping for 18 um photos but you can add more and there are like loads of other options where you can get like a, a a string with like little clips on them you can get a display you can get bookmarks you can get all kinds of things and yeah it's just really lovely uh again this is not sponsored i'm just really happy that i got them and i'm really excited and it's it's an app that i will continue to use because um you know growing up as someone who you know thought having pictures was forbidden and haram um it's really nice to be able to print out some pictures of my loved ones that i take and share great memories with and then you know put them up on my walls and display them and have fun you know so yeah it just it just makes me happy so i've got comic con i've got beach day i've got the mella with jimmy finally jimmy is gonna grace my beautiful walls uh we have um eid <laughs> from last year where we went to the inclusive mosque initiative ali malik is very blurry in the background um we have speaker's corner with the family um we have the free sahel rally i still have the flyer up he's up there um from the free sahel i'll just tilt my camera up so you can see he's up there um so yeah we have there we met omema who's usually in australia uh this one came out really dark but it was a really dark picture so i can't really blame anyone for that but it's halima and carl we went to uh the ned um this again is from the free sale rally it's one of my pictures with armin whom i sorely miss um this is from amsterdam uh amsterdam we were getting high uh amsterdam amsterdam halloween uh a very 
private party that I was invited to with my best friend Alicia, who is my favorite person in the entire world. Me looking like a snack, me looking like a snack, me looking like a snack at Zara's birthday and claiming her as my bae, uh, and us at Zara's birthday. So yeah, uh, those are all the pictures that I got from from this app well they're my pictures but i got them printed from this app and it's just it's just lovely it's just lovely to have them and i'm gonna write little captions like i have with these ones and i'm gonna stick them up on my walls and it's gonna be wonderful i may order another batch because i recently came upon this cornucopia of old memories that now i want pictures of um so i may download some of those and then also send them through this app but i'm i'm very very happy and very very excited for those of you who couldn't tell already but moving into the subject what are we talking about we are talking about Netflix's Messiah now I do have to give a disclaimer um, the genre of this series is not my favorite genre my favorite genre is dark fantasy uh and many a time dark fantasy is not well adapted as for those of you who've been following my channel for a really long time uh my favorite thing in the entire world that has ever existed and i have said on many occasions that if this book was to you know the author of this book was to claim that it was divine i would personally believe it but my favorite thing of all time i have the books here well three of them because i was given them for my birthday is this is the third one and i dropped a palette um berserk uh berserk is my favorite thing in the entire world it's my favorite story i have a tattoo from berserk um and many of you might think oh that's stupid she has a she has a tattoo from a manga and uh it was a tattoo that my boyfriend broke up with and he said that exact same thing so well done um not ed the the one before him um but berserk is my favorite thing in the entire world i love the dark fantasy genre you know witcher just came out on netflix he's up there as well but it's the movie poster um you know i i love that genre because it's gritty uh it makes you think it makes you feel it everyone is imperfect you know like i, I love those things about the genre and they're often not well adapted as many of us who follow berserk know very well berserk has had some terrible adaptations um because it's dark and gritty but also because it, it seems as though it's all of us weirdos who don't know how to do anything that adapt these things um and personally i was really happy with the witcher adaptation but i'm biased in that respect because i've been following witcher for a really long time i've read all the books i've followed all the games um so it's it's just a genre that is my favorite uh but this isn't about dark fantasy this is about the messiah um but just because dark fantasy and fantasy in general is my favorite genre doesn't necessarily mean i can't enjoy things of other genres you know um like my favorite sitcom is how i met your mother uh and i love sitcoms i recently finished watching jane the virgin that what well, that was something that i really really enjoyed and isn't necessarily in a genre that i thought i would enjoy um so the, there's a, a huge mix of things that i even in terms of music like my favorite band of all time is lincoln park but um and apparently i put my favorite things on my body uh but uh, that doesn't mean that I, I'm only into like alternate or new metal rock. I, I love all kinds of music. I love folk music. I love pop music. I love, uh, you know, jazz. I love R&B. I love all kinds of... I have not come across a type of music I do not like. Um, specific singers and specific artists and specific songs, very much so, but not a genre. Uh, and the Messiah, Messiah, the series, is very much in a genre that's like political intrigue um like crime i would al almost call crime fiction um as well as some super well there's nothing supernatural about it no spoilers but there really isn't anything supernatural about it um but it, it kind of goes into that genre as well um and it's not it, i'll admit it's not one of my favorite genres but there are things um within that genre that i that i do enjoy like i enjoy the intrigue i enjoy the investigations i enjoy all of that um 
I like the whole underbelly and how things you know how the world works and that's that's the things those are the things that I personally enjoy um you know when I was younger some of my favorite movies were war movies um so be that ancient war movies like Gladiator is one of my favorite movies um Braveheart is one of my favorite movies but also like recent ones like I loved Black Hawk Down for example that's one of my favorite movies as well I haven't watched it in a really long time so it may be better in my mind but I was really young when I watched that um but what I really really wanted to like Messiah because it got this premature buzz um because the entirety of Muslim Twitter just exploded about it and was like oh this is the coming of the Dajjal um and Netflix made a very 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 now seems as though grand gesture of blocking people who were giving out spoilers about the Dajjal um and now having seen the entire se like first season it seems really dramatic because the spoilers that that person got blocked for didn't even happen in the series um so yeah i i really wanted to like it because of the initial bud buzz because it's within like the sphere of things that i like to talk about and i, I i'm interested in like I, I was really happy for example that for once the like the islamic mythology or law whatever you want to call it was going to be addressed in mainstream media you know netflix is pretty mainstream like that um and I, I was really happy about that and i was really looking forward to it like i've been talking about it since that buzz happened like i want to say like a month and a half ago um and it came out on new year's day and i i don't want to say that i was disappointed because i still think that it's worth watching i would still recommend it but there are certain things that bothered me about it um like for example i'm i'm a notorious binger one of the reasons why i don't typically watch television is because my favorite genre is dark fantasy and those things aren't adapted very well or at all um but also because i'm a binger like if i start something i want to finish it as soon as i can because i just want to know everything um and that's one of the reasons why I like dark fantasy is because there's an entire world to explore. But this isn't about dark fantasy. Let's get back to the point. Um, I'm a notorious binger. You know, I finished Jane the Virgin, which is six seasons long, 22 episodes each in like two weeks, even less than that. It was like seven to ten days that I finished it in, like start to finish. Um, I did the same thing with Supernatural. It's in its 15th season. I haven't watched that season yet, but 1 to 14 I watched within like two weeks. Um, I'm a notorious binger and that's why I reserve to all of my all of my binging to Christmas because I don't have any family that I'm responsible for at the moment. So I just spend that time eating bad food and binging te television shows. Um, and that's what I did. And Messiah was one of those ones where I fell asleep in 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 the fifth episode and i've never fallen asleep watching something before i've like i have had a fascination with television since i was really young i've i, I have this insane concentration level for one thing and i've never in my life fallen asleep during something that that i'm watching never uh, it doesn't matter what time of night, what time of day, who I'm with, where I'm at, how tired I am. I have never fallen asleep. And I fell asleep in the fifth episode. Um, and one of the reasons why is because there were a lot of awkward pauses and just like, I don't know who wrote the dialogue for the series, but I really didn't enjoy the dialogue. I thought the di dialogue was really choppy and didn't fit well together. It was very sparse. Like there were very few things that were said. I feel like there were very few things that were said. I felt like every episode dragged because there were so many like awkward poses and um, like strange cuts of scenes where things would be longer than they should have been like i'm not a movie producer i'm just a critic okay i don't know anything about producing movies i'm just sharing an experience and obviously this is just my opinion you don't have to agree with it but i felt as though there were just all these really long pauses that didn't need to happen um let me give you an example one of the movies that i enjoyed of last year was the joker i feel like a lot of people did and one of the things that i enjoyed the most about the joker was that i felt as though not a single second was wasted in that movie every single second was packed with something to observe to hear to see you know th there was something to take in in this netflix series 
there is there are so many moments where I was just frustrated where I was just like say something or do something like wh why is everyone just quiet why are you just staring like I understand in in moments of awe in moments of shock in moments of sadness like I understand pauses there but why in the middle of sentences why like while you're having a conversation why just it just nothing like I, I don't understand why they're like when you watch it I don't want to give out too many spoilers but when you watch it I think you'll understand what I mean there's just so many awkward poses and pauses sorry and it felt as though each episode was just dragging dragging to like an hour or 40 minutes to an hour like it just felt that way um and some series that I watch um some episodes that I watch like one of the other series that I partake in is Vikings like because I, I love that culture uh, and I love I'm very fascinated by their way of living and and the series itself is very interesting I mean I think it kind of fell off after season four but um, but the first I want to say from like two to four was absolutely amazing and I will say that those seasons never felt long enough I always wanted more and that's what I enjoy about watching TV and it's what also why I don't watch TV throughout the year I just watch a lot of YouTube um, because I constantly I get obsessed with things and I, and I want to know more and I want to understand more parts of this story and just give me more and more content but every single episode of Messiah that I was watching I was just like why is this so long like I feel like I'm in school why are you taking so long to get to a point just get just stop talking about it and just get to the point you know and I under like I get it it's complicated and things like that but it shouldn't be my job to observe admin like it shouldn't be this is meant to be entertaining and I just feel like this is a chore like I need to get through this so that I know the end like that's that's it and like I said, I really wanted to enjoy this series. Like it wasn't like I came in wanting to scrutinize it. One of the series that I did want to scrutinize was The Witcher because I love The Witcher. The Witcher has been, you know, something that I've been following for a really long time. I really admire the literature. I really admire the video games. I admire each of the characters and all of their little quirks. The Witcher was something that I really did want to scrutinize and I really ended up enjoying. The Messiah, and maybe this is why I, you know, I'm and I'm biased towards The Witcher because it's something that I enjoy. But with Messiah I with the initial hype I wanted to enjoy it because of the initial hype and because it's something that I'm personally interested in you know be that Islamic mythology political intrigue um you know religion in general like all of those things I'm very very up to like I, I love those things and uh, one of the things that I couldn't get out of my brain because I also binge watched Bojack Horseman and there's one episode that I really like I wouldn't suggest um, that anyone watch the entire series you can if you want to if you're into like really depressing content if you enjoy like Rick and Morty and you enjoy Rick's just existential like, feelinglessness towards everything you might enjoy Bo Bojack Corson but I understand that it's not for everyone but there's one episode that I really really enjoy it's called Free Churro and it's just one long monologue and in that monologue he talks about a program called Becca and he he goes on about how he it, it's completely irrelevant to what he's actually talking about because he's giving an, a, a eulogy to his uh, he's giving a eulogy um but he talks about becca and he says that it was a show that he saw that had potential and it was just wasted because he constantly wanted it to get better and i couldn't get that out of my brain while i was watching messiah because i i see the potential there's so much potential for this show to be so much better than it was and i'm just disappointed um like i wouldn't say that it's a trash show like it's garbage like no one should watch it you should watch it i think it's a good show it's a solid five out of ten but I, there's just so much that is missing um and as someone who follows dark fantasy and i know i keep talking about it but as someone who follows dark fantasy i am adept at remembering names and places i i cannot tell you <laughs> the names of anyone in this show besides Jibril, Samer and Masih like Al-Masih, al right? 
those are the three characters that I remember from the show. I remember, like, you can ask, you can quiz me on Game of Thrones. I know everyone's everyone's name. You can quiz me on The Witcher. I know everyone's fucking name. I know ev all the places. I know all the, you know, I even know who has allegiance to what. Like, and these are all made up names. You can ask me about Vikings. I know all their names. And they have pretty obscure names. It's not even that the names are obscure. But the characters in this show, in Messiah, are so unmemorable. They're so easily forgotten. They, like, they don't make me feel anything, which is something that is, it's the one thing that art is meant to do. It's meant to make you feel, okay? And the only arc that I thought made me feel anything was Jibril's, Jibril and Samir's arc. Like, that part of the story made me actually feel something. And I think the showrunners really, really did try to humanize the characters, but it felt fake. It felt fake, especially with the like the Israeli character, who's a guy, and, and and there's a bunch of things that happen to him. I don't want to give away the plot, but he has like a daughter, and they like really try to human it, humanize him in that way. But I feel like they over like they either did it too much, it, they did it so much to the point where it feels as though this guy is just an asshole. This guy's just a dick. He just abandons it, his family at any point in the show. They did the same thing with the CIA, the American Jewish. CIA lady um, like I said I don't remember their names and I can't be bothered to look them up um, but she's another main character who's like investigating into this al Masih character right and um, she she's just so unmemorable every time I see her on screen I'm just like sort your shit like why why are you here um, and they try to humanize her by involving her father who's clearly going through like alzheimer's or dementia or but like something like that and they do it to a point where it just makes them both look like assholes like both of these characters and then there's other characters like there's a clergyman i think his name is felix um there's a clergyman they don't necessarily humanize him or demonize him but he's just so he's just annoying he's just annoying from start to finish but that j may just be because he's a clergyman and I'm biased against them um then there's the so there's the younger characters there's Jibril and Samir which are Arab characters Jibril and Samir both come from Syria and you know we'll talk about that in a second um and their story I can relate to because there was a lot more showing going on and very little telling going on whereas with the all these other characters it was just telling like this is this character she really cares about her fucking Alzheimer's father like okay but can you just show me that just just show me anything to make me think that she actually cares about her dad like <laughs> the one there's only one moment where i i sense genuine emotion coming across on the screen from that character from the cia lady and it's when she gets angry at her father and it's not it, it, there's no other indication that she has any care for this character and it's the same with the Israeli operative who, you know, he has this young daughter who he seemingly cares about, but it's a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. Like, there's no moments where he's just, like, looking at something of hers and, like, feeling something. I don't feel anything for these characters and it bothers me that I don't because as someone who is autistic, who, who likes these really deep and, and, you know, disturbed characters, it's not even that I like clean-cut good and bad characters. I like characters who have all these layers to them which in this show they're meant to be layered they're, they're just so one-dimensional and so cardboard and like maybe this would have come across well if you had written about it like if it was a book it would have come across really really well but it just it just doesn't it's it just doesn't um and, and it bothers me it bothers me because I, I honestly I, I watched the entire season and I probably will watch the second season to see if it's improved um and so moving on to the next thing, um, there's all these like really heavy issues that they cover. So one of the first things is they open with ISIS, right? And I'm going to talk about a different aspect of that later. But they open with ISIS. Um, they talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They talk about immigration in America. They talk about all these like really heavy subjects. And I feel as though they could really shine a light on it. They could really shine a light on it, like really, like they could take this opportunity to make a difference. But 
at every turning point, at every single one, every single one of these issues that are brought up, it just feels as though they just glance at it and then they turn it off, like they just move on to the next thing. It's just like, why? Why are you doing that? Like, I'll give you an example. In The Witcher, and I know there's a lot of people who, like, I, I went to a dinner on Tuesday and I brought this up and people were like, Witcher was shit! And I got so offended. <laughs> but I shouldn't. But in the books, for example, let's not talk about the TV show. In the books, some of the things that The Witcher highlights is um, racism and discrimination. They talk about that a lot because there are races in The Witcher that are discriminated against, like elves and dwarves, and there's a lot of reasons for that. And they really highlight that. Um, and they shine a light on it. And But at the same time, they can also cover other deep subjects like war. And, um, you know, the lesser evil is a big thing in The Witcher. Like, they talk about that a lot by presenting these really difficult choices to this very conflicted character. And these are all conflicted characters. And they shine a light on all these huge issues in Messiah. And they just don't address them very well. Or at all. Like, the one that they kind of did address was the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And, like I said, that was the only arc that I liked. Was with Samir and Jibril. Who are these, you know, refugees who are escaping this war-torn land with ISIS. And it just, they just don't address them. They just don't address these issues. The immigration, the racism, um, the, the conflicts, the ISIS, like all of these heavy topics that they could shine a light on, they just don't. And it's not even that the show feels rushed because as I said, it's unbearably long. Uh, it feels unbearable. It's not unbearably long because the, and each episode is like between 40 and an hour, 40 minutes and an hour long. But it feels long because there's there's all these pauses. And in those pauses, you could have added things in the script to address these really pressing issues. Like you have this couple, you know, you have this Israeli operative, you have their daughter and you have this woman who you find out at the end cheated on him or whatever. It's not a big part of the story, so don't get upset. Like you have this right and at no point do they sit down and talk about how dangerous his job is or like at, at all like, there's no care or concern in these characters they're just like robots or puppets like they feel like a, it this is what i said yesterday to someone it feels like a really great show it feels like a really great show that someone just stole the script of and just made a shitty play out of. Like they just did, they just took it and they just like took the cliff notes and they just put together a show. Like they put on a little pantomime. Like it's not believable. Um, there are some shows that do it really, really well. I can't off the top of my head think of any because I'm just annoyed now. But like it feels as though it was a caricature of a show, like a, a like a school children's play of a show. It, it, like it's not the show. This is just the, the play of the show. Um, it, it, it just doesn't feel good. Like it feels like a remake. That's what that's what it feels like. It feels like a fucking remake. Okay. <laughs> like I I enjoyed elements of the show, and I feel like so much of it could it is is just beautiful, and it, it and and there's potential there, but it just didn't come across well. And there were just so many things that were frustrating about it. One of the things that is just a pet peeve. Anyone who is walking into the show just needs to know is how many times they bring up religion without needing to. Um, we know the show is about religion. It's called Messiah, for fuck's sake. Like, we know it's about religion. But the opening line of the show is a reporter talking about ISIS and then saying that the situation is so critical that it would take nothing short of an act of God to solve it. Like, and I'm paraphrasing, but they do say act of God and it like, really bothered me. I was like, oh, this is what this is. Like, you don't need to constantly tell us that the show is about religion. We're aware. It's called Messiah. Like, you don't need to constantly tell us that. And there's many points in the show where they will constantly throw out, this is a show about religion, just in case you forgot. Like, stop. Stop. We're aware. We, we, we know. We know. <laughs> we know. Um, but... Like, like I said, the way that I would rate this show is a 5 out of 10. I think it's still, personally, if you were interested in, like, all of these, like, subcategories, like, political intrigue, um, religion, you know, myth like, law and mythology, trickery, even if you like being duped, even though, like, at, at every point I was just like, okay, so that's fake, right? Um, there's no way that's real. <laughs> 
like I don't want to spoil anything, but there's one point in the show where uh, the title character, the Messiah Al Masih, does this thing in the middle of Washington D.C. He does a thing. I'm not gonna say what it is. He does a thing, and I'm just like, okay, well that's obviously fake, right? It's a it's a show. <laughs> it's like it's so obvious. Um, I mean, maybe it doesn't come come across like that because I've also seen people who really enjoyed the show. Ali Malik was someone I had an argument with about it. He really enjoyed the show, and that's fine, um, you know. But like to me, it just felt very, very flat. Like it didn't feel impactful, or like there was no point in the show where I was like, "Oh, that really made me feel something." There was okay. There was one point in the show where something really bad happens to you know the two characters that I actually enjoy. Um, th there was one point in the show where I was like, oh no, please no, oh no, please no. But the rest of the show, that's like 5% of the show. The rest of the show is just like, okay, so can we get back to Jibril and Samir, please? Can we just get back to that? Like, I, I, I don't care about these other characters. Like, they could die now. I do not care. I do not give a fuck about them. They're so boring and so flat and so cardboard and 2D and one-dimensional. I just, well, I just said 2D and one-dimensional, but you know what I mean. Like, they're so blank, I can't even remember their names. And I remember, like, fucking Tormund and Giant Spain. It, it's, it's, it's a flat show. Um, so I wouldn't say don't watch it. I think that it's still worth watching just to see, like, the potential. And if you enjoy these, like, different genres, I think you would enjoy it. Um, but the awkward pauses are annoying, the the frustration of not addressing really serious issues is annoying, um, the one-dimensional, like, throwaway main characters, like, and they're main characters, not even that they're, like, side plot characters, they are main characters that you feel nothing for, that's something that I can't get over, um, and their stupid human problems that aren't highlighted very well and aren't given ear to. It feels like they just threw a bunch of things in and then tried to make them work. Um, like one of the characters has endometriosis and can't have a child and it's just like, okay, but can you talk about that? Like, why are we just hinted at it? Like, please just show us, show us that you care about this. Um, <laughs> But they don't. They just mention it. It's like it's like a report in film form. It sucks. Like I I, I really want to feel something, but I just don't, and, and I feel terrible for it because everyone else seems to enjoy this show, and I'm being the downer. Um, but yeah, if if you're like if you're like me, you won't enjoy the show very much. I mean, there are aspects of it that I did enjoy, obviously, but if I would rate it, I would rate it like a four or a five out of ten. Like it's okay <laughs> it's okay it's not monumental it's not life-changing it's not gonna make you like I definitely there are many things in this world that I go back to and I watch over Berserk is one of them the Witcher games are one of them even the show I've watched it two times over now um and it w I wouldn't say that it's like a masterpiece but it's still like for a season one of a dark fantasy it's pretty fucking good. Like, I've watched it over. But Messiah, would I watch it over again? And usually I do if I'm watching a series. I'll watch the entire season again before the new season comes out. Fuck no. I'm not watching it again. <laughs> I'm not watching it again. You know, like, to compare this, I, I don't even know what to really compare it with. Because, again, this isn't a genre that I venture into. But something that also touches on religion quite heavily is, like, The Handmaid's Tale. And that had me feeling from start to end just, like... Oh my god, oh my god, I feel so much for these characters, constantly, but this show is just like, you make me feel, it's not even that you make me feel angry, it's just, I feel nothing, and that's frustrating, I feel nothing bothersome, um, anyways, thank you for watching my review, I hope it was insightful, and if it wasn't, please let me know, if I'm completely wrong, please let me know, if you had a completely different perspective of Messiah, and you thought that it was astounding, 10 out of 10 show, please let me know in the comments below, roast me, dislike, unsubscribe, just give me a negative review on Yelp, like, do what you have to do, um, this is just my opinion, you do not have to agree with it in the slightest, um, but that's what I thought of the show, and I thought I would put it on my channel, because it, it kind of meshes with the kind of content I do, um, so, yeah, 
Um, and, you know, I hope that you enjoyed my review, if not the show, because I think my review is better than the entire... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you liked this video and you liked my review, consider liking, consider subscribing. I don't typically do movie or channel, like, review. I'm not a review channel, but I will do it here and there. Um, I, d I typically do movie reviews with Tyler Preston 20 and I may like repeat some of this on his channel when we review over there. I'll probably do a spoiler filled review on his channel um, because he said he may want to do that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I have to say. If you would like to support me in a more monetary way, I also have a PayPal, I have a Patreon, I have merchandise, I am an artist, as you can see. Um, so you can buy some of these cool like vests, t-shirts, uh, fucking coasters, anything you want on Redbubble. All of the links are in the description below. Follow me on all my social media. Everything is in the description. And yeah, I will possibly see you on Sunday for a live stream. If you have a topic that you would like to talk about in the live stream, please comment down below or on my Twitter. Again, description below if you would like links to that. Um, and yeah, uh, I will probably see you on Sunday. And goodbye. <laughs>